somebody say I'm special. I'm special. See, when you're special, you got to walk special. Yeah. You got to talk special. Amen. Amen. You got to remember your relationship to the family. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't care what anyone says. No matter how mean and ugly our children be, they still in a relationship with the family. Amen. Are we ever right about it? Right. Amen. They can cut up and they can act ugly. But still yet, you have to say, yes, that's my child. Yeah. Isn't it good to know this morning when we cut up and act ugly, yeah. God is still saying, that's my child. Amen. Oh, I wish I had a witness this morning. Amen. Amen. You got to remember this morning what you have been promised. Amen. You have to remember that you are a stranger passing through down here. Many times we're trying to make a permanent home down here. Amen. We are storing up a stuff that's not going to exist where we are going. Right. And knowing that everything that we have down here belongs to the Father. Thank you. Know what you've been promised. Yes. Life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Number two, point number two. Know what God requires of you. Know what God is required of you. See, we have many mandates about what the world wants. But the world is not bigger than God. Amen. We fear the world more than we fear God. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. We, we, we listen at what the world is saying to us. Amen. And, and we try to please the world. But God is the one that you owe your allegiance to. Amen. You should be saying without hesitation this morning, I'd rather work for God than to work for anybody. All right. It's not what man wants. Is what God wants. And God wants us to be holy. He wants us to be acceptable in his sight. He wants us to realize this morning that we do not have to wallow in the mud. We don't belong there. First of all, know this morning that you've been redeemed. Look at somebody say, I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. Ain't you glad this morning? I know that's improper grammar, but aren't you glad this morning that you're not the way you used to be? Amen. Aren't you proud Amen. this morning that you're not who you used to be? Amen. We may not be who we want to be right now, but every day that God gives us another opportunity is a day that we strive for perfection. Amen. Know that God is waiting on you to change. Yes. He keeps telling us over and over, I desire none to perish. Mm -hmm. He's waiting on you to change. You don't have to be like the world say you have to be. First of all, you know this morning, uh, amen, if you're in your family, and you all, and you know your family is a good family, and every family is a good family, because, you know, we have what the world calls the functional families, and all these good things, but... When you come down to it, you still have it. Amen. Amen. No matter whether you go to Iraq, Iran, wherever it is, you still yet family. Amen. God's family is still extensive. We're all over the world. Amen. We should not have things in our lives like racism. We should not have things in our lives that, that, that separate us from, from God. We should let small things that the world puts in place to separate us from God. We should know this morning, regardless of what color anyone is, they still are a child of God. Amen. Amen. Know this morning that God is waiting on you to change. All of us in here must change. There will come a time when there's a permanent change that's come on. And in order for that permanent change to come on, one must lay down this old life, this corruptible life, this old body that we possess must go back to where it came from. But I'm telling you this morning, we've got a house, we've got a home that's not made by hands. Know this morning, you've been set free. Let somebody know you've been set free. I've been set free. Amen. I, amen. I don't need alcohol yeah. to define me. I don't need drugs to uplift me. When I think about the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for me, I begin to get happy within my spirit, knowing that I realize that I may go through the trouble sometime down here. I'm going to have some ups and downs down here. But I know without a doubt this morning that I have been what? Set free. Free your mind this morning. Point number three. 
Teach your children about God. Teach your children about God. Let them know, too, that this is a day for freedom. They don't have to worry about all these things that we are precious that we're putting on our children. We are looking at this morning where we live in a world where God is totally upset. We're looking at a world where two men raising children, two women raising children, concept is not there. When children have to question their identity, when children don't know who they are, what they are, then there's a point that we have to point here. And the reason why they don't understand who they are, what they are, is because the parents don't know who they are and what they are. Knowing that they should know fully well this morning that they were created in the image of God. Yeah. Yeah. Holiness. Mm. We need no one to tell us what's wrong. We already know. Mm -hmm. We don't have to sit around and abuse no one. Mm -hmm. We love each one, but sometimes the love that we have, we have to remember it does cover a multitude of sin. Mm -hmm. I love you because of who you are, despite what you're doing. Isn't it amazing that God loves what we're doing? And sometimes we don't do what we require to do. Mm -hmm. But isn't it good to know that he still loves you? Mm -hmm. Teach the children about the commandments of the Lord. We put the scripture to you, train up a child. Mm -hmm. We need to start training our children. But praise God this morning, some of our children need to be trained by us. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about underage children. I'm talking about children 21 mm -hmm. and above. They need to find themselves. I pray every day for my children. Amen. Each one got a different life. Each one has their own life. But I pray as always that when I close my eyes and when I get where God places me, I'll be able to see them there also. Amen. Can I get a witness this morning? Amen. Amen. We want our children to exceed. But a lot of times in exceeding means that we have to look overlook their faults. Amen. We have to overlook their faults. Yeah. Why? Because our parents overlooked our faults. Yeah. Our heavenly father is overlooking our faults. Yeah. But we, we must remember as the word is taught to us. John the Baptist came preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yeah. The kingdom of heaven is still at hand now. We have to change our way. Repent means change your ways. Thank you. Amen. Put your house in order. Look at your neighbor and say, put your house in order. Put your house in order. Isn't it ironic? When you look around, you see children and folks acting up. And the first thing that comes to your mind is, you don't have no home training. Mm -hmm. You heard that? Yeah. You got no home training. Amen. When you see them doing things that you know they shouldn't be doing. And the way we used to say, who your people are. <laughs> Amen. I know you. We, we have to go again. Start policing the neighborhood, policing our community. You don't have to say anything. You don't have to walk around with a cross on your forehead or your back. But there's something about when a child of God comes in the room. Amen. Come on, somebody. Right. When you go home to family reunions, they know who the prayer warrior is. Mm -hmm. They know who keeps the family together. Put your perspective back together. The Bible tells Jesus went into the synagogue to, to, to pray. And as he was there, he was handed the book of the prophet Elijah. Mm -hmm. They tell us the Sabbath servant there was with two lessons learned, and it was read. The first one was always taken from the pentagon or the law. The five books of Moses that were written were on two rollers. And the day's lesson that was to be taught was always left unscrolled. For the reader to come up and select where they wanted to read from. Mm -hmm. The five books that Moses wrote Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. These are the five books, the law. The prophets were on a single road, no special petition on it being left over. Christ taught in the synagogue their places of public worship where they met to read, expound, and apply the word to pray 
and to praise God. Amen. All the gifts of grace, all the gifts and graces of the Spirit were upon Jesus that day without measure. There is something about the divine intervention. When you get in the Spirit of the Lord, there is something unique with the connection between you and your Creator. Amen. First of all, Christ simply said these words because he said, what? I came mm -hmm. to preach. He came by the words of his gospel. Notice that Christ came by the words of his gospel. He was the one that gave the good news. Mm -hmm. He was the one that created us from the beginning. If anyone knew how we work, he knew. Can I get a witness? He knows. That's the reason why you got to understand this morning. Everything that he's put in you, he knows all about you. Amen. 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 All the things you're going through, and you say to yourself, I wonder if I'm able to bear this. I wonder how much more I can bear. That's the day that you're supposed to look to him yeah. and give it to Christ. Because he knows how much you can bear. Yeah. First of all, he told him, I come to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The gifts have many combinations and are designed and established to improve our relationship with God. When we use the gift that God gives us, it is to edify God. Christ wants us to know that we were given these gifts to deal with man. With man. See, if the angels came, we'd probably have a little respect, more respect. But when we got someone that looks like us, tell us, yes, I know what you're going through. I've been through that. I've had that problem with alcohol, drugs. I've been there. I know about that. They did have a different respect for what you were saying to them. See, godly counsel must come from godly people. All right. Are you listening to me? First of all, it is our job in this day of freedom is to reach the world. Isn't it amazing that God had to move the church building, church, the people in the church, in the building, outside the church, all right. so that we could evangelize the world? Isn't it a beautiful that instead of having a church full of people now and everyone is saying, I can't go to church, they can tune in on Facebook, YouTube, whatever you can. And God is making it known that he's coming back soon. Because he said to Tony, I don't go see. He's telling you right now that those who did not know him will be able to hear him. There is nothing that God is holding, holding in right now that he's revealing to the world. I'm coming back. I am coming back. This is the day for freedom. Because when he comes back, he's not going to be focused on what you thought you should have done, what you would have done. If you have not accepted him before he arrived, it will be too late. He focuses on the spirit, on the gifts of the spirit, the power in which they operate. We must not lose sight of the twofold reason for the manifestation of these gifts. The gifts were clearly given for this freedom. First, for the work of the ministry. Each one of us in here this morning are here for a purpose. Whether it is here to encourage, here to uplift, here to do whatever position God has planted you in, it is your responsibility to make sure you do it to the best of your ability. Whatever you do, if you're holding the door, be the best person that God has put you there for. If you're singing on the choir, open your mouth and give God the praise. Amen. This is the day for your freedom. If you're here as a church member, stomp your feet and let somebody know, I'm not afraid of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. We must know that we are set free. We are free to praise God in a way we so desire. The gifts are given to be useful in these two realms, yes. the world and the church. Mm -hmm. The world and the church. church. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then you are his church. Amen. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. 
If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then you of the world. You either saved or unsaved. There is no in between. You either for God or against God. You either working for God, you working against God. God said the devil for black. He don't like. People don't know what they want, who they are. Amen. You run into people like that. Amen. And, and someone say something, you say, oh, yeah, they got a good opinion. Somebody else say something, oh, they got a good opinion. And the question is, what's your opinion? Either you stand for something, or you are all for anything. We must continually remember that the work of the ministry is to minister to the world. The church exists as God's instrument to reach the world. The Bible tells us that we are to tell people, as John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Who was that son? Jesus Christ is that son of God. The world needs to hear his, his ministry. It needs to hear it desperately. First of all, we need to revive our own family. We need to preach to our own family. Amen. The church was intended to move into the world and evangelize the world. This is the day for freedom. Matthew 28. Great commission for the church. Your great commission. 18 verse and Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and what teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And then he gives us a promise there. And lo, I am with you always, always. even to the end of the world. Yeah. We don't have to be afraid of what the world go on. The world can kill you one time. Hello, somebody. The world can kill you one time. But God can kill you twice. Are you listening to me? See, when the world kills you, the soul got to go back to God. When God kills you, he not only kills the body, but he kills the soul. The question is this morning, will you live again? Freedom has been given unto you. If you don't know who you belong to, Satan will wipe you out. In this world, we must be able to let Christ be seen in us. We're coming up on holiday, on a holiday. They call it Halloween. I have never seen so many people spend so much money trying to entertain the devil. First of all, the church do not celebrate Halloween. We celebrate harvest fest. We don't give Satan no credit. If I don't mind going and see a witch outside, then the door's going to be closed. Yeah. Amen. And, and in this world, we talk about if I open up and some zombie say something, I know something wrong. That means I don't look this to shit. Are you listening to me? Because I know the dead is not going to live until Christ comes back again. Amen. Amen. We need to teach people, yes, and people say to me, oh, Pastor, there's no harm in dressing up. And I say, if you want to dress up, that's great. But why do you want to dress up like the devil? Why don't you put some wings on? Look like Moses or somebody if you want to dress up and that's the thing. But I guess Christian attire don't go too far. Amen. But I've never seen any children come get candy where we had to actually do anything. We just had the candy. And we are living in a world where now, particularly, you need to be careful when you send your children. Are you listening to me? People don't love your kids, they don't love you. And tomorrow when you wake up on TV, you find out somebody's child got hurt for eating the wrong kind of candy. Mm -hmm. Don't celebrate Halloween. Don't give the devil no credit. Celebrate harvest fest. Let God know you thanking him for the aboundedness that he's given to you. Harvest fest doesn't mean at this time of year the farmers came and gave back, gave God a praise for the things that God had produced them for. How they survive. Amen. So I'm saying something to you this morning. Don't be like the world. Know that you're set free. First of all, the world won't understand. Jesus is not 
king of the dead and the king of the living. You are living by his grace. The word came unto me. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of advice and power. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. When you got the knowledge of God, when you have the spirit of God, then you have to deal with those that come in your world. Your family needs you this morning to be a prayer warrior. Amen. They need somebody to tell them about the goodness of the Lord. Amen. But not only tell them, but they need someone to show them Amen. how to walk in the footsteps of the Lord. Amen. You need to proclaim unto them your freedom is already been paid for. Amen. When Jesus Christ went to Calvary, when he dropped his head and a locks on his shoulder, he paid for your price. He paid for your sins. Amen. And this morning, you are free. Yes. First of all, how many are you free this morning? Amen. Song was written to say, I'm free. Mm -hmm. They love to sing that at funerals. Mm -hmm. No longer chains holding me. Mm -hmm. But you don't need to be dead this morning to give God praise. Amen. You got to praise God while you still get have breath. They will say, while I still yet got breath, I'm going to what? Bless the Lord. I may not understand where he's carrying me right now. I may not understand why my body seems to be deteriorating so fast. I may not be understand why my footsteps are getting slower. But I thank God that knowing that one day when he gets ready, he'll take me home. I may not get there when you get there. But hold on, I'm going to be there. Come on, somebody. First of all, you got to look down and see the goodness of the Lord. You got to see this morning that God is blessing you over and over. You got to know this morning because you have been set free. God is something telling you, walk in my footsteps. Order your steps out of my word. Therefore, you'll be blessed. How many want to be blessed this morning? Amen. Word say he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised. For our iniquity. For the chastisement of the peace will upon him. And by this stress, we are healed. By this stress, we are healed. Every time they put him, somebody will get the blessing. Oh, you're going to be with me this morning. First of all, that freedom has been set there. God has been telling us over and over, I love you so much. I want you to understand, you've got to understand this morning, God is sent to provide those grief inside. He has told us that we have a crown of for life. First of all, know this here. They must understand that freedom is not cheap. It had to be paid for. Freedom was not. Christ paid for each one of us this morning. We have a debt. We couldn't pay. But thanks be to the glory of God. When he looked out of his glory and said, I know these are my children. I understand they're stumbling. I understand that they're having a hard time. But I'm going to show them that I, in me they can have life and have life evermore. This day is the Lord's day. Today you ought to give God praise. This day you ought to know this morning why you were chosen. You've got to know that God has done great things for you. When you couldn't do it for yourself, he was right there. When the doctor didn't know what to say, he was right there. Some of us in here this morning are here only by the grace of God this morning. You have been set free. Why? Because you should proclaim this morning. He has done great things for me. You ought to be rejoicing this morning, knowing that trouble will not last always. My freedom is dependent upon Jesus Christ, and he got up on that third day. This day is a day for freedom. I have been set. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have been set. Thank you. Free. Thank you. I don't need all those things that were holding me. Come on, somebody. Amen. I don't have to hang out with all those who think they somebody. Mm -hmm. I know I'm somebody. Right. Are you listening to me? Right. You don't have to convince me of who I am. I know who I am. Why? Because the price has been paid for me. Yeah. You may not like the way I talk all the time, but when we get together and we get the fellowship, all of you know the same man that I know yeah. is going to be all right. Yeah. It's going to be all right. That's right. 
Amen. Freedom. Your freedom has been paid for. Your freedom has been paid for. Enjoy your freedom. And if you want that freedom, all you have to do is accept, accept Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As Lord and Savior. Thank you. Not difficult at all. Choose you this way. Who are we going to serve? The world or the Lord? Choose. They have already told you there is no in between. You must choose. I encourage you this morning. Choose life. Choose life. Amen. Amen. Choose life. For those that are watching, we praise God for you. And if you're going through a hard time in your life, call to someone who's godly. Mm -hmm. Call someone who's godly. Mm -hmm. And ask them to help you reach out to God. Mm -hmm. But God is going to need a third party. No. I'm going to tell you that now. All you need to do is call on him for yourself. Amen. All the third party can do is point mm -hmm. you to him. Amen. And in doing so, when you praise God, God knows who you are. Thank you. Amen. Get yourself a reason to praise God. Mm -hmm. So say this prayer with me if you're still wandering and lost. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I know I have sinned and I know I have done wrong. I want to come back home. Forgive me, Father. And thank you for deliverance. I accept your son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father God, for a second chance. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you, and we bless your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.